This production is brought to you by Ancient Origins, reconstructing the story of humanity's past, and the YouTube channel, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. A Forgotten Empire, the Ancient Kingdom of Mitanni. Written by Wu Ming Ren. Narrated by D. W. Draffin. Mitanni was a state that existed between the 16th and 13th centuries BCE. This state occupied the land of the Hurrians. This area is located in the upper Tigris-Euphrates basin and corresponds today with northern Iraq, Syria, and southeastern Turkey. At its greatest extent, the territory controlled by Mitanni extended all the way to the Mediterranean coast on its west, and into Assyria Mesopotamia on its southeast. The strength and influence of Mitanni was so great that at one time it was part of the Great Power Club, which included Egypt, Assyria, Babylonia, and the Kingdom of Hatti. Today, however, this powerful kingdom has been reduced to hardly more than a name and a handful of archaeological and linguistic hypotheses, and few have even heard of this ancient kingdom, hence making it a forgotten empire. The Rise of Mitanni It has been suggested that the rise of Mitanni occurred during the time when the old Babylonian empire was in decline. The weakening of the latter provided an opportunity for the former to expand its borders. Alternatively, some have said that the Hittite destruction of Alep, Aleppo and its sack of Babylon allowed new states to emerge in the region, including Mitanni. Nonetheless, little is known about the early kings of Mitanni. This is due to the fact that much of Mitanni's culture and records would later be destroyed by the Assyrians. However, thanks to correspondence with foreign powers, the names of these early Mitanni rulers have been preserved. Conflicts with Egypt Around the end of the 16th century BCE, Mitanni, which was then under the rule of Paratarna, took control of Alep, an important Syrian city located halfway between the Mediterranean Sea and the Euphrates River. The presence of Mitanni in Syria would bring it into conflict with another ancient superpower, Egypt, whose pharaohs, most notably Tutmosa III, were also interested in controlling this region. In the middle of the 15th century BCE, possibly 1457 BCE, Mitanni took part in the famous Battle of Megiddo. During this battle, Mitanni sided with the king of Kadesh, and was defeated by the Egyptians, who were led by Tutmosa III. Tutmosa's victory at Megiddo allowed the Egyptians to attack Mitanni's western region. When the Egyptians reached the Euphrates, they built ships and ravaged towns belonging to Mitanni that were located on the riverbanks from Carchemish to Emar. Whilst the further expansion of Mitanni into Syria was checked for the time being, the Egyptians were not able to gain control of the Syrian interior. Additionally, Tutmosis' campaign did not result in the permanent conquest of this area. Moreover, the power of Mitanni was growing in the east. The Alliance Between Shaush Tatar and Tutmosa IV Toward the end of the 15th century BCE, Shaush Tatar, the king of Mitanni, sacked the Assyrian capital of Ashur and humiliated its inhabitants by sending the doors of the city's famous temple to Washakani, the capital of Mitanni. It was also shortly after this that friendly relations were established between Egypt and Mitanni. An alliance was forged between the king of Mitanni, Artatama I, who succeeded Shaush Tatar, and the Egyptian pharaoh Thutmose IV. Tutmosa III's grandson. The Amarna Letters During the middle of the 14th century BCE, Mitanni was at its height of power, and friendly relations with Egypt were maintained. 
These relations can be seen, for instance, in one of the Amarna letters sent from the Mitannian king to the Egyptian pharaoh. For example, in EA 17, one can observe that the king of Mitanni, Tushrata, had married his daughter Tadu Heba, also called Tadu Kipa, to Amenhotep III. Upon Amenhotep's death, Tadu Heba married his son Amenhotep IV, who is better known as Akhenaten. It has been speculated by some that Tadu Heba and the famed Nefertiti are actually one and the same person. The End of the Mitanni Kingdom Despite the cordiality between these two powers, the alliance between Mitanni and Egypt would soon disintegrate with a power struggle that broke out in Mitanni during the reign of Tushrata. Whilst Tushrata was supported by the Egyptians, his rival, Artatama II, who was a relative of the previous king, Shutarna, was backed by the Hittites. With Egyptian support, Tushrata's victory was assured. The Egyptians, however, became wary of the growing power of the Hittites and decided to withdraw support for their ally. This allowed the Hittite king Supilo Liuma to do as he pleased without fear of retribution from Egypt. The Hittites attacked and sacked Washakani, whilst Tushrata was assassinated by his own son. The Hittites installed Artatama II as a vassal king and ruled over Mitanni until its fall to the Assyrians. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today I'm bringing you a very special episode that is brought to you by none other than Ancient Origins. Ancient Origins specializes in reconstructing the story of humanity's past. And honestly, for those of you who love anything ancient, mysterious, and the unexplained, it's the best resource online for you, providing a variety of content. But more importantly, it's helping us understand the subjects that we all love. From the fringe to the mainstream, you get the best of everything. But if you want access to even greater content, I highly suggest you becoming a premium member to Ancient Origins. And for those of you who may ask, okay, why? I have an answer for you. One, it is a treasure trove of information. It gives you even more access to the subjects that you love from ebooks, webinars, expeditions, even more articles. But in some cases, you get to talk to the experts themselves. And by being a subscriber to Ancient Origins, you are continuing to help them make history matter. Ancient Origins literally has something for everyone. So before we get to the presentation, check out the links in the video description below. I'm going to provide you with a variety of references to Ancient Origins from their Facebook page and other social media outlets to the very heart of the Ancient Origins website itself to help people like me and you better understand the subjects of history, mystery, and the unexplained that we all love.